Hello, everybody. How you doing? Congratulations on being a senior. Mr. C from Plum and Shop, Mr. Carvo. I just want to give you a couple insights uh, about the finances of life. And uh, my wife works at a bank, so she gave me some good points. One thing I want to tell you is uh, my daddy always said, save your pennies, the dolls will take care of themselves. Just a thought. Uh, one of the most important things for you kids to keep in mind is your credit. Your credit is essential going through life and it'll help you get places more than otherwise. Uh, that being said, um, one thing you want to start with is establishing credit by maybe opening up a savings account at a bank or a credit card or something of that nature. Uh, also, um, the bank people are trained to help you with that kind of thing. So if you go to your local bank or a bank that you do business with already or your parents do or what have you, they can give you insight as to the best way to approach uh, going forward, whether it's with your bills or what have you. Um, another note, um, my wife mentioned the biggest thing with kids is the lack of priority. You got to figure out what's more important. You may want a bunch of things, but you can only you only have so much money, or you're only going to make so much money. So you need to prioritize your, your expenditures so that you uh, have money at the end of the day, and you save money for a rainy day in case something unforeseen comes up. All these little additives are all positive. So. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. I hope that helps you, and uh, I'm always here if I can help you in any other way. Thank you very much. Okay, so if I could give you one piece of advice, looking back on my life, if I could do one thing differently, I definitely would have lived with my parents after graduating high school and college for as long as humanly possible, because I went out on my own and had to work four jobs to, to pay all my bills and such. Granted, I learned a lot of life lessons, but one piece of advice, definitely live with your parents for as long as you possibly can. Also, start saving early. Do fun things, but always put a little bit aside. So, the best advice that I can give to seniors that are about to leave uh, is probably contrary to what a lot of people say. Um, a lot of people say that debt's a good thing, uh, particularly uh, like getting a credit card to build credit or um, you know getting a car loan and things of that nature to build credit because you're gonna need credit later on in life but I want to just tell you that debt is bondage um, you are legitimately uh, enslaved to who you owe money to um, and I know this because I experienced it I bought a car when I was 19 for 7500 bucks and I financed the whole thing um, and then when I got married, my wife had an $11,000 loan on her car. We paid for our wedding, which was $6,000. And then I took out student loans as well. In total, I have paid off all of those except for my student loans because I had grad school too. And at the age of 29, I've already paid off $31,000 worth of debt. That's a lot of money that I could have had in my bank account, particularly in relation to my cars and things like that. Um, one of the best things I can, I can say you, to you about cars is my dad kind of influenced me to buy a new car because I was having problems with my other one. He said, just buy new, you won't have to worry about it breaking down. So I bought a $7,500 car, uh, it was actually $8,500 brand new, uh, but I had a $1,000 trade-in. And I realized now that if I spent money on a used car, let's say 3000 that I actually paid for up front rather than financed, and then actually put in $500 a year, even at three years, I've still paid less than $7,500. That's almost $3,000 I could have saved, um, put in an interest-bearing account, put into an investment, uh, a Roth IRA that I could access right away, uh, not my dividends, but the money that I put in, and I could have actually had my money growing. But instead, I bought a brand new car because I said I didn't want to deal with payment, I mean, I didn't want to deal with repairs. Instead, I dealt with payments payments that I have to pay interest on, and so I ended up paying more than what the car was actually billed for because I had to pay the bank. These are all things that I cannot suggest to anyone. Buy a used car, pay for it. I hate the idea of what this mystery value of credit brings to the table, and that is that you play now and you pay later. I would suggest that you pay now when you want to play now because then you know that you're not going to be in bondage to any other entity when things are done. 
My advice is to pay all your bills on time because that way you'll build good credit. So one way that I started to do this was when I was in college, I got a small credit card, $500 limit. I would use it to buy gas, groceries, regular things, pay it off every month on time, and that built my good credit. So then when I graduated college and could afford to buy a car, I actually was able to get a loan on my own without a co-signer because I had good credit established, even though I was only 22, which is pretty atypical. So that's my advice. Hey guys, so uh, one piece of advice uh, that I think I can give you guys uh, and share from what I did when I was younger. Um, when I first went to college, my father, I didn't have a credit card yet, and uh, my father told me that um, you, know, you should get a credit card to start building credit. Um, so what I did is I got a credit card, and since I hadn't had a credit card prior to that, wasn't able to get a big um, a maximum amount that I could spend on it. Um, but whatever I did was I would just make sure I spent about 50 bucks a month on that credit card and did not want to max it out uh, and made sure that when that bill came in at the end of the month, I would pay it off in full right away. Um, so by paying off your credit card in full every time at the end of the month, um, that was able to build my credit um, and have good credit um, so that as the time went on and the years went on and I started working more, uh, making more money, I would go ahead and build that, um, spending more money on the credit card up that to maybe 200 bucks, 300 bucks, 400 bucks a month. But each time that credit card bill would come in, I would pay it off in full to um, establish that good credit so that um, when it came time to buy a house, I was able to get the you know good amount of loan uh, to buy a house, to buy a car. Um, and that's one advice that I would give you guys. Save your money and pay attention to interest rates. So when you do think about how you want to spend your money, um, think about experiences and things that really matter to you. Um, buying clothes and buying expensive coffee isn't going to last you forever. Think about spending your money on vacations, on traveling, and on experiences that really matter. When I think about debt and I think about what I have now, one of them is my house. I have to have that uh, because I have, a, I have a family of three kids uh, and it's growing and I need to be able to provide for them somewhere. But I will say this, I bought my house too soon. If I waited one more year to save my money, I could have put a larger down payment on my house and I would have less debt on my house. I have my student loans for my grad school, right? Uh, I ended up paying for my last five grad school classes out of my pocket and I'm still $27,000 in debt in grad school. Now think about that, I've got a full family, I've got a full mortgage, and now I also pay my grad school debt. Luckily, I don't have car payments, and I don't have a cable bill, and I've cut all my monthly payments. Um, I almost pay nothing monthly besides my utilities, but nonetheless, that's a lot of money that I can't save to put towards my family right now because I have decided, or I should say I did decide in the past to incur debt, um, and now I'm stuck paying it off. So when you go out into the world, I really want to encourage you, don't be comfortable with monthly payments unless you absolutely have to have them for things like utilities. And don't be comfortable with all of this credit building stuff that people present. You can build your credit just fine with paying your utility bills and with paying for your cell phones and whatnot. You don't need a brand new car to do it. You also don't need a brand new car to avoid having to fix things. I've bought in brand new cars and I've had to fix plenty. I bought a used Honda Odyssey for my growing family and I haven't had to touch it. It's been a beautiful thing, but I paid cash for it. Did I pay a lot of cash up front? Yes, but I'm telling you right now, I'm saving money in the long run because I do not have to pay the average $400 a month plus payment each month for that van for the next six years when it's value will depreciate in a much quicker pace than that. Uh, one piece of advice I have for young folks to do financially is set up automatic deposits directly into a savings account and do that right away. That was one of the best things I ever did. Um, and one thing I recommend that you do not do is do not get a credit card. Um, and if you do need a credit card, don't get one until you have a full-time job. Uh, my cousin once bought season tickets to the Celtics without a job to ever actually pay for them and 10 years later he's still trying to pay it off. Okay, one piece of uh, financial advice I would have for you is when you go to college, there's going to be many credit card companies um, waiting for you to sign up for a credit card. 
be very careful with credit cards and debit cards when you use them. At the end of your first uh, trimester, you will be greatly in debt if you listen to them and you know get them with a high interest rate and be careful of the withdrawal, the overdraft, um, because people, you know, college students tend to dip into the overdraft thinking that it's free money, but it's not. You have to pay it back to get to a, a negative, to get to a zero balance. Also, my other piece would be never buy a piece of property with someone you're not married to. You know, if you're undecided, you can go to a community college, you can go to a state school, tuition's much lower. Uh, you can get an associate's degree anywhere. You can always transfer out if you need to. So, I mean, you know, don't lock yourself in. If you're not sure, don't just go to some school that's like forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a year. Because a degree is a degree to a certain extent. So, I mean, unless you know, you know, like going to Bryant, uh, if I wanted to do accounting or finance, that's a huge school for that. So, a lot of my friends ended up doing that and they get good connections out of it to get those jobs. But I ended up doing phys ed. So, I mean, I went to a master's program, totally 180 from what I did undergrad. So, I could have gotten an undergrad degree anywhere, state school. So, I mean, be, be realistic with what you can and can't afford, and then, uh, you know, don't be, don't be afraid to look at alternatives like, you know, community college and stuff like that. My biggest suggestion and my biggest piece of advice is to um, become financially independent as quickly as you can. So, what I mean by that is um, have your own checking account, pay all your own bills, um, even try and buy your own food. I know that. Um, a lot of people advocate for staying at home to save money and that's awesome but if you do that don't be afraid to be like hey I'm gonna have my own phone account I'm gonna pay for my own car I'm gonna pay all my own bills um, the sooner you do that the sooner you feel independent and the sooner you stop sort of being anxious about becoming an adult one last thing I want to just point out is that I started my married life at a young age I was 21 when I got married so I've been dealing with a lot of those younger debts that I had, my car loans and my, my credit card um, and my student loans for a while. But now that I've paid off most of that, uh, and now I have only my student loans in my house, I've been able to save so much money that in my bank accounts now, I can pay for the things that I need to actually pay for. I don't need to use credit anymore. And I can take a hit to one of my bank accounts. Let's say there's an emergency in my house or there's an emergency on my car and I don't have to worry about being out of funds. When I have a credit card, I have to worry about being out of funds because I have to pay it back. Now, I don't have to worry about paying it back because I'm taking it from what I have, which just goes with the, if I need this now, I want to use it now, and I have it now.